Nicole Farrell here, Kachina Yoga, and welcome back to Alignment, a free mini series with the intention of bringing to you tips and tidbits that help you to get yourself into alignment physically, mentally, and energetically. Today we're going to be focusing on grounding and trees and how bringing together the benefits of grounding and trees through the Krasana, which is our tree pose, can help you to do just that. So um, I know grounding is a word that you hear thrown around a lot and uh, I want to kind of break down my definition of grounding from my perspective so that we can be in alignment with where we're going with this uh, posture today. <clears throat> so grounding, when you think about grounding, um, nature should automatically come to mind because grounding is going to be done through the earth, through the earth's energy. So. We're all in this earth avatar, this earth body. All of our body is made up of earthly elements. We have every element inside of us because all the elements are needed for life. So when we're grounding, what we're doing is we're reconnecting to those elements that are within um, the elements of the earth so that we can recharge one and we can ask the earth for recycling too. She is a master recycler. The earth is a boss. That's why you see the physical manifestation of the recycling efforts with plastic and glass and, and um, aluminum, etc., to save the earth. The earth is automatically a recycler of energy. So when you re remove um, energy that's no longer beneficial to you, when you remove it through transformation and you release it into the earth, you can. Uh, with appreciation and with gratitude ask for that energy back in a nice clean way and that's what we're doing through grounding so it's recharging it's releasing it's like putting your phone on the charger that's what we're basically doing with our energy so in order to do so you need to get out into nature when you're grounding um, you can think about grounding as a uh, being on grass, you can think about grounding as being on dirt, you can think about grounding being in mud, you can think about grounding being in natural bodies of water, I'm not talking about the swimming pool, uh, natural bodies of water, and you can think about grounding uh, as sand as well. So anytime you're out within the natural elements of the earth, you can find ways to ground. Um, when you are grounding, you are going to want to take your shoes off. You don't, you know, you don't absolutely have to but you get the best benefits just being out here is beneficial but you get the best benefits when you take your shoes off and your shoes hit the ground your feet hit the ground your feet hit the ground and make that connection you should be able to feel a connection between the sentient being that is the earth and yourself okay so um, grounding is, is really really beneficial in many ways if you think about what the earth energy provides it's stability uh, grounding provides us with stability. It provides us with um, a, a confidence, building confidence. Grounding provides us with strength. Grounding is healing, okay? It's very healing. It's the earth, you think about earth energies and you think about herbs and you think about um, tree barks that are used in certain medicines and teas and those are very healing things, okay? Water is an earthly element. You know, we gotta always remember that we are earthly beings because we are in an earthly body. So, when we're doing our grounding through our tree pose, uh, we are doing uh, many things at one time. We are grounding the body because we are forming a straight and solid alignment from out the sole of our foot, hitting and uh, grounding into the earth. With as long as well as going all the way up our spinal column up and through the crown of our head so we are opening up an energetic channel into a straight firm and solid pipeline that's aligned and open and flowing so we're connecting with the, the ethers we're connecting with the heavens we're connecting with the cosmos as well as we're grounding into the earth and when we're doing that we're making a space between because we're going to be bringing our uh, waist up out of our hips we're going to be bringing our chest up out of our waist and we're going to make a space between the heavens and the earth that is our own little space of of um individualism so that's our little space that's our little um pot to play with and make our own brew uh, in this nice little not really little but this nice universe that we all exist within so um when we're grounding 
we are also building patience and we are building focus so the mind and the nerves work hand in hand together when we're grounding when we're in our tree pose we are going to be focused on one unmoving point it behooves you to focus on an unmoving point and to find that space of concentration because if you're watching something that's moving if it, that, that tends to move like the person beside you or looking in the mirror even don't want to be doing that you um, if something comes off it's going to throw you off balance as well so we want to definitely find a focal point and that helps you with concentration which also helps with um, strengthening uh, your third eye and the mind so we're going to be bringing strength and, and alignment into the body we're also uh, this pose helps with strengthening the ankles strengthening the knees strengthening the hips as well so it's a very uh, great alignment pose and then we're going to be focusing on the concentration point so we're going to strengthen the mind and we are going to uh, calm the nerves by doing so we're going to bring in the breath so you'll take some nice deep breaths and we have our chest open so we'll be expanding our thorax which is going to be expansive to the lungs and the prana that's coming within we're going to be aligning up tall and reaching up towards the heavens so we'll be aligning with air we'll be aligning with ether and we will be aligning our mind body and spirit if you follow me on social media you probably have seen me pop a tree pose in many different places around the world because it is one of my favorite poses because it is such a grounding pose so whenever I travel I love to pop a tree pose because what it does is it helps you to get in contact with the locational energy that is the space that I am currently visiting so energy is everything is energy and there is locational energy that you kind of want to know what, what, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, and you need to ground in order to do so. Um, there are a few times when you might not want to do this pose, and that is if you've had the knee injury or knee surgery, because you are going to be taking um, the weight off of one leg and allowing one leg to be the one that's uh, holding up your entire body. If you, so if you have knee, severe knee issues or you had knee surgery, let's not do it. If you are suffering from vertigo, then it's probably not going to behoove you to do this pose because you're not going to be in a space of balance. And if you have high blood pressure, then when we go into our full tree where we expand our arms and expand our phalanges, then you are going to want to keep your hands in a resting namaste pose around your heart center so that you don't trigger any uh, issues with it. So other than that, you should be pretty good to try this pose. If you fall out the pose, don't worry. That's called yoga. When we fall out, we just get back in it. We keep on practicing. We do not want to uh, focus any of our attention on putting our other opposite foot on the knee because the knee is a space of vulnerability. So we're trying to build strong knees, not weaken it. And placing our opposite foot on our knee is going to be a no-no here. So we're either going to put it down below or up above. This opens up the hips quite a bit. Um, and uh, let me see, is there anything else I wanted to talk about with grounding? Oh, I want to talk about trees. How could I forget? So tree pose, if you think about trees, they have their uh, roots firmly planted into the ground, right? So this is what we're going to be doing when we're in this pose. We're going to be firmly planting our active leg into the ground. Our active leg is going to be our um, our tree trunk and our toes and the sole of our foot and our heel are going to be the roots that we are going to push down into the ground for um, connection into the earth and allow that energy to flow up so we're going to have one solid line of a tree trunk from our active leg all the way up into our branches so when we're thinking about our um, branches I want you to think about the head as one of your branches so your neck is one your neck and your head are aligned it's a branch and your roots of your hair are your antennas that are reaching out into the cosmos you have two more branches in your arms and little ten more branches in your fingers so you want to spread those wide you want to open those up for reception because you want to you can send out um, information into the air through your branches and you can receive information in through your branches as well 
When you think about trees, I want you to think about the fact that their roots are deep within water. Our roots are deep within water. You have um, all of these roots within your head that um, your, your brain sits within a cerebral fluid. So your roots are actually, are actually sitting within water. So you have many, many similarities to a tree. Your root chakra is uh, your most earthly chakra and it is very similar to a tree in that it holds information. So in a tree, whenever you see the rings of the tree, that they're similar to the way um, the rings of a CD or a DVD or a Blu-ray are in that they hold information so that you can receive it when you put it into the proper equipment. Same thing with trees. So when you're doing your uh, tree pose, if you are able to do it outside with the tree, it really helps because trees, like I said, they hold information. They are sentient beings and um, just communing with trees is a natural thing that we don't even realize because trees rely on the breath that we breathe out they rely on that to survive and we rely on the breath that the trees breathe out to survive so they clean the carbon dioxide that comes out of our mouth and out of our lungs they need that and we need the clean oxygen that they do so we work together with trees so when we're um, doing our tree pose, if you are able to do, out, do it outside and use the tree as your focal point, or as your, as your space of concentration, while you're in your pose and while you're doing your breath work, visualize the breath coming out of the tree and you're, the breath coming out of you and into the tree and out of the tree and into you. And you having a two-way conversation. And as you continue to do this pose and you continue to make a connection with the tree, Believe me, you will continue to have greater insights come to you because trees are very old and they are very, very wise. It is not weird to be connected to trees whatsoever. Last but not least, there is a little mythology that goes behind uh, Vikrasana, and that is um, of the goddess Sita. So the story behind this pose is in Hindu mythology, if you uh, know anything of the uh, triple goddess, which is going to be uh, Saraswati, Lakshmi, and Durga, Parvati, Kali, different um, aspects of the same goddesses. But Lakshmi is the one that we're concentrating on with this pose. So Lakshmi in her incarnation of Sita is uh, stuck in, has been um, secluded into a deserted island and she is awaiting for a uh, lord rama to come and rescue her she's patiently waiting and she is amongst the trees so um lord rama is an incarnation of vishnu and he sends hanuman the great warrior who is a devotee of lord ram hanuman an, an incarnation of lord shiva so you can think about shiva and hanuman off to rescue um, Shiva and uh, Vishnu, I'm sorry, off to rescue Lakshmi, okay? Who is stuck with the trees on this deserted island. She is doing this tree pose as a form of growing, of growing patiently, growing her concentration, growing her patience, growing her strength, growing her confidence in that she will be rescued and growing her um, self internally through tree pose. So the, the myth is that when Hanuman finds her and rescues her, this is the posture that she was doing. So that is what the Krasna is meant to do. It's meant to build your patience. It's meant to build your confidence. It's meant to build your balance. It's meant to help you with your alignment. And um, when you think about this posture and you focus on the goddess Lakshmi, the goddess Sita, uh, think about the fact that she is um, a goddess of prosperity and a goddess of abundance. And so you have an abundance of strength within you and an abundance of strength within the earth that you are grounding into. And that is what you want to be actually focused on, on sustaining, because she is a goddess of sustenance as well, on sustaining that concentration, that focus, bringing in the strength, bringing in the stability, releasing anything that doesn't serve you, uh, expanding the breath, and building and finding a space of balance. So I am super excited about the Krasana today. Give me a moment, I'll get into posture and I will do a demonstration for you on the proper alignment of tree pose. I hope this is something that you pull into your daily life. 
I used to do this even at work. You don't have to do it outside. I would find a, a, a conference room and do it. Uh, do, I, I did yoga in the conference room quite often. But what you can do is if you ever feel yourself around that time of between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m., which is the Vata time of the day, if you're one of those people who work at a job that is, requires um, a lot of mental uh, work, so you're more like on a computer uh, all day long in the cubicle, get up, find a little space, pop a tree pose for a few minutes, and allow yourself to ground because that time of the day is full of air and ether and that time of the day is when we time, tend to get spacey, we tend to lose our concentration, we tend to lose our focus, and we tend to need grounding. So it's just a little tidbit that you can do when you can pop a tree pose, whenever you need some grounding, whenever you need to um, pull yourself back into a space of alignment, and whenever you need to find some balance, pop a tree pose. Whenever you're traveling, pop a tree pose get in touch with the location and just add this uh, posture into your daily life because remember at the end of the day there is only one you so you have no choice but to shine let's get into this tree pose I am super excited I'll be right back I like to introduce myself to my tree by giving it a hug and thanking it for the yoga pose and the meditation you want to find a clear space on the ground so that you can find your space of balance. Remember, we're going to find ourselves as one solid tree trunk, one straight pipeline of alignment. You want to find a gaze of something that is not moving, a focal point. And you can utilize your tree as a space of balance to bring your foot into your shin or into your groin. You do not want to bring it on the knee. That is a no-no. You can use your tree as a space of balance to bring your foot up, pressing the sole of the foot into the inner thigh, bringing your hands to Namaste Mudra. If you want something more challenging, you can utilize the balance to bring your foot up, pressing the sole of the foot into the inner thigh. <clears throat> One straight solid line of alignment, bring your hands to Namaste Mudra at heart center. Square the hips forward, bring the uh, waist out of the hips. Bring the chest out of the waist, looking straight ahead. Begin to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Keeping that space of focus, that space of concentration. You can extend your branches. And if you're ready, you can bring them even higher, making a nice space between heaven and earth, your individual space of creation. Continuing to breathe, continuing to give gratitude to the breath, to the tree, to the earth. Bringing your hands back to Namaste Mudra. We're going to go ahead and release the other leg. So when you release the leg, go ahead and roll it out. That leg was active. You should feel a slight burn. And what we do in one side on yoga, we have to do on the other. So let's go ahead and bring the other opposite foot up and make the opposite leg active into the shin or into the groin. Remember, we are not bringing it into the knee. That is a no-no. So you can utilize the tree for a space of balance and bring your leg up, bringing your hands into Namaste Mudra. Or if you want a more challenging position, you can utilize your own sense of balance, bringing the sole of the foot into the opposite thigh, bringing your hands into Namaste Mudra, squaring the hips, bringing the waist out of the hips, bringing the chest out of the waist, head looking forward, and to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose, thanking the earth for releasing all of the tension and negativity that you no longer need, reaching your hands up into the heavens, spreading your branches, sending out information of what it is that you so desire or allowing information to come in as to what it is that you need to receive. Continuing with the breath. Bring your hands back to heart center. Giving gratitude to the earth, giving gratitude to the tree, giving gratitude to yourself for your practice. Bring your leg down. You're gonna to wanna to roll that active leg out. Take a deep breath in, hands to heart center. The divine in me bows in gratitude to the divine.